We are currently in Munich, one of Germany's largest cities located in the southeastern state of Bavaria. And after spending a fun, delicious, and festive day visiting some of the city's Christmas markets, Have I mentioned that today is my favorite day? We're spending the next two days exploring the city itself, including its gorgeous architecture, local cuisine, rich history, and so much more. We're kicking off our morning at Cafe Frischut to try some Bavarian pastries. And first up, we have Schmalzenudel. This is a pastry with tall, doughy walls and a thinner layer in the middle. And you're supposed to pour sugar in the middle before you eat it. Look at the giant spout for this sugar thing here. <laughs> it's huge. So you can get the maximum amount of sugar. Oh, wow. It's nice and light and airy. The outside is nice and crispy. The inside is a little chewy and fluffy. It just has a nice fried dough flavor, and then when you get a bite with the sugar, it adds a little sugar crystal crunch. And just look at how thin the middle of this is. You actually get to see them making them in the front, which is super cool too. We also got a Krapfen, which is a Bavarian style donut, and it also has some jam inside. Mmm, that is an excellent donut. Oh my god. So pillowy. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow. Oh, that jam is so good. Those nice sugar crystals on the outside. I probably have sugar all over my face right now. This one's definitely sweeter. I might like it better just because it is sweeter, more of what you think of when you think of a donut. The history of Munich dates all the way back to the mid 8th century when Benedictine monks founded a monastery in the area. In fact, the name Munich or München in German actually means home of the monks. However, the city wasn't considered to be founded until 1158 and in 1506 it became the capital of Bavaria, which at the time wasn't part of Germany. Over the years, the city has endured fires, plagues, and wars, including World War II, where bombs destroyed more than 40% of the city. The city was meticulously rebuilt to look like its pre-war self, including a rule that no building is allowed to be taller than the spires of Frauenkircher, one of the most prominent cathedrals in the city. We're currently walking around Marienplatz, which has been the city's main square since it was founded, and the buildings around here are so beautiful. I especially like the new town hall right behind me, which has this gorgeous, ornate Gothic architecture. Besides the striking new town hall, another prominent building in Marienplatz is the St. Peter Church, which is the oldest church in Munich with its original version being built in 1180, which is so crazy to comprehend. And for five euro a person, you can go up in its tower to see a view of the city. The tower is 91 meters tall with 306 steps and it's two-way traffic, so it's very tight. Sometimes you have to pull over to let people pass. <laughs> breath. The sections where you actually get to go because no one's coming the other way, you just have to go fast. So I'm huffing and puffing. This feels like more than 300 steps. That was a wow, yeah, that's a view. <laughs> oh my gosh, wow. <laughs> it's taking my breath away, literally. <laughs> it wasn't already. <laughs> it wasn't already. What a view. Being one of the tallest structures with nothing blocking your sound, you can really hear the hum and the buzz of the city, the music off in the distance, cars driving, people kind of talking down below. I think my favorite part of this view is just seeing all of the orange roofs 
all across the city. You can also see the stadium for Bayern Munich and being a huge football fan that I am, that is so cool. Wish we could go to a game. They have one tomorrow, but the tickets are very difficult to get. But man, it is packed up here. At some points we've been packed in like sardines. There's nothing like being smushed up against a bunch of strangers 91 meters above the ground. down from the tower inside the church and it is gorgeous in here. We made it down just in time to see the Glockenspiel. This is a clock with 43 bells and 32 life-size figurines and at 11 and 12 and 5 in the summertime it reenacts stories from Munich's history. I'm not sure what any of the stories meant, but the music is super fun to listen to. So it turns out that the first story is about a knight's tournament that took place in honor of the wedding of Duke Wilhelm V to Renata of Lorraine in 1568. And the second story shows barrel makers dancing in the streets to cheer up people frightened by a severe plague. It's kind of crazy just how much of a crowd the glockenspiel attracts. As soon as it starts playing, the entire plaza just fills with people, all staring up, all filming on their phones as they listen to the music. In our last video, we visited three of the city's Christmas markets, which if you're here during the holiday season, we highly recommend. But there's also a year-round open air market called the Victulian Market, which has over 140 stalls with produce, meats and cheeses, food vendors, flowers, gifts, and so much more. This is probably my favorite market that we have been to in a long time. All the stalls are so nice and everything just seems very high quality. For our first stop in the market, we're trying Weisswurst, which is a popular breakfast sausage. It's a white sausage that is made with veal and pork back bacon. It's typically seasoned with parsley, onions, lemon, and some ground spices like nutmeg and cardamom. I think I read that you're supposed to take the casing off. So if it's wrong, blame Google. <laughs> the color of this sausage is so interesting. It is bright white. Mmm, that is a lot of flavor. Oh, wow. It almost has like a holiday flavor to it. That is one of the most unique sausages that I've ever had. That mustard is really good. It's not super mustardy. It almost kind of has like apple in it or something. Kind of sweet, a little tangy. This is probably like our fifth or sixth sausage that we've had in our three days here in Munich. We're on a sausage diet now. Picking out some really cool postcards for the fam. It's one of my favorite things about Europe, the drinking fountains. Since it's a cold winter day, we stopped by the Munich soup kitchen to get some hot soups. We got some goulash, which is a Hungarian beef stew with a red wine sauce, and Lebach noodle, which is a traditional German soup with a beef liver dumpling. Mm, that's very good. I know it might not, might, might not be on my face, but it just has a lot of flavor in there. The texture of the dumpling, very interesting. It's, it's ground, but you can just tell it kind of tastes kind of fattier and feels a little fattier in the mouth. The only time I've really had liver was pate in Vietnam, which I did not mind, and then also chicken liver in Chiang Mai, which I did not love very much. I don't like the texture. <laughs> so I'm a tad nervous for this. Usually not big, a big organ, organ meat kind of girl. 
Hmm. Yeah, it doesn't have like an overpowering liver taste. It actually, yeah, it just tastes kind of like meat. And Adam was right. There's a ton of flavor in this. It doesn't look like it would be overly flavorful because it's very brown. But yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on in there. We knew we liked the goulash, so we got this one as our safe option. And it looks delicious. Oh yeah. It reminds me a lot of chili. Very similar, like kind of tomato-y flavor profile. We cannot express how happy we are to be traveling abroad again. Traveling internationally is just so energizing and fulfilling for us, just being surrounded by so many different people, speaking all sorts of languages, having all the science being a language that we don't understand, getting to try new foods, and just wandering among all this architecture that's unlike anything that we have at home, plus the challenges of figuring out how to get around and using a new currency. It's all just so overwhelming, but in a good way because it pushes us out of our comfort zone and everything, even the littlest of things are just extra exciting. dinner we came to Annie's Krabler Garten to try schnitzel which is technically an Austrian dish but it's also very popular here in Germany. It's meat that is pounded thin with a tenderizer and then breaded and fried. They have a handful of different variations here but we both got the pork schnitzel and I got the Obadsto, Obadsto one which has this special Bavarian cheese inside of it and I can kind of see it oozing out. I'm so excited. I just can't get over how big this thing is too. When they put it down I thought they mis misunderstood us and thought we wanted like two each because it's so much me. Oh my gosh. Oh baby. You can see some of the cheese in there. Ooh. Oh, it's so hot. Oh my gosh. Wow. That alone would be so heavenly because the meat is perfectly tender and it's so crispy and fried. But that cheese takes it to the next level. The cheese just adds a nice creaminess to the middle and since it's so hot, it just melts in your mouth. So I ordered mine with a mushroom cream sauce and this huge pierce here. I guess they didn't think that was enough. They had to add this other big piece on top of it. Oh, baby, baby. Oh my God. That is so good. That cream sauce is ridiculous. Mm. This is so good. This is better than I thought it would be. It's one of those classic dishes. You know, is it going to live up to the hype? This one is freaking good. I tried my hardest, but I could not conquer the schnitzel. If you come here, be ready to eat. Maybe don't eat the entire day so you have enough room in your stomach. Or maybe split it between two people. Adam's going to have to roll me out of here. Love taking public transportation when we're in cities and the public transportation here in Munich has been amazing there are a handful of different ways you can get around you can take a bus you can take a tram you can take the U-Bahn which is an underground train and you can take the S-Bahn which is what we're gonna be taking this morning we downloaded an app that way we could pay for tickets easily and we actually got a week-long pass for only 21 euro per person which gives us unlimited rides all around the main city area The trains here are super clean and they're also very, very quiet. It's like a library in here right now. Nächste Halt, Isartor. Ausstieg zum Deutschen Museum. To get the rest of the way, we're gonna take a tram, which so far has been our favorite mode of transportation because you get to wind through the streets.
We just grabbed some coffee from a delicious spot called Man vs. Machine, and this morning we're headed to the Munich residence. From 1180 to 1918, Bavaria was ruled by the Wittelsbach dynasty, and here in Munich, the Munich residence served as the seat of government and residence of the Bavarian rulers from 1508 to 1918. We checked out its Christmas market in its courtyard in our last video, but this morning we're gonna head inside to see some Bavarian royalty. There are different tickets you can get to visit the Munich residence, but we chose the 14 euro ticket, which got us access to the museum and treasury. In the treasury, you can find a bunch of different jewels and swords from the rulers of Bavaria, which are a sight to behold. And in the museum, there are 130 rooms, including the antiquarium, which is the oldest room in the residence and the largest and most lavish Renaissance hall north of the Alps. The museum was beautiful and a ton of fun to walk around. Even though much of it was destroyed during World War II, it was really well reconstructed and it seemed very authentic. But my favorite part was walking around and seeing all the old antiques and artifacts. Like the crowns, that was so <laughs> cool seeing all the family jewels. Yeah. The museum is way bigger than it looks like from the outside. There are so many different floors, so many different rooms. You could spend hours in there, but we were on a bit of a time crunch because we had some very special visitors arrive this morning to Munich from Texas. My brothers Nick and Daniel and Daniel's girlfriend Christy. It's my brother's first time ever in Europe, so we're about to go meet up with them and they're gonna be with us for the next week and we're so excited. <laughs> all right, the gang's all here and we're now off to see something you wouldn't expect to see in a city nowhere near the ocean, surfers. This is cool. It's so cool. <laughs> Right in the heart of Munich along the Eisbach River is a man-made wave where locals, visitors, and even famous surfers have been surfing for over 40 years, even in the winter. These surfers are incredibly talented. It is so mesmerizing to watch. I can seriously just stand here and watch this all day long. They're okay. Maybe I should jump out there and show them how it's done. <laughs> they get wrecked. <laughs> Insert footage of Adam wiping out on waves in California yeah. and Vancouver Island. <laughs> The river and surfing area is located in the English Garden, which is one of the largest urban parks in the world. It has tons of green space and walking paths, and even in the winter when the vegetation is less lush, it is a super nice place to walk around. They have a Christmas market here, the English Garden, which is actually a lot larger than we thought it would be. There are tons of different stands. We grabbed some bratwurst, surprise, surprise. And they even have curling you can watch. I don't think we're uh, brave enough to give I wanna our, embarrass yeah, myself. Yeah, in front of all, all of the Germans. <laughs> Ooh. One thing that Munich is famous for is Oktoberfest, which is an annual beer festival and carnival that takes place for two weeks in late September through early October. But outside of Oktoberfest, you can still experience some of the beer culture here in Munich by visiting a beer garden in the summer or a beer hall. Even though we don't drink, it feels like a must-do experience to go to one. So for our last stop in Munich, we're gonna go to the most famous one in the city, Hofbräuhaus. <laughs> Oh, 
Hofbräuhaus was founded in 1589 by the Duke of Bavaria with the original purpose to serve beer to the Bavarian court. It wasn't until 1828 that the brewery opened to the public and today it is considered to be one of the most famous beer halls in the world, mostly with tourists, but also with some special locals who have their own designated table and store their steins in a locker in the brewery. in here you gotta be on the tables like a hawk looking for an open one jeez this is a leader of the hop roy house beer look how huge it is this is Catherine's brothers and we just got a little alcohol free half liters they also have people that walk around selling pretzels so we got our first Bavarian pretzel it's yeah. humongous salty I think, I think Munich wins for the most stares we've gotten while filming a video. Sure. <laughs> <sighs> it's okay, my social anxiety is not freaking out or anything. I'm being stared at right now. <laughs> I feel so awkward. Everyone's staring at us. Is it not normal to film yourself eating soup? <laughs> Doesn't everyone do this? <laughs> we also got a Krapfen. A Krapfen. <laughs> These German words are hard. They're fun to say though. Very hard. <laughs> Adam, what's your favorite German phrase? Gute Fahrt. What does that mean? Which means have a good trip. <laughs> or have a good fart. 